These are the 20 craziest moments in NBA history. Folks, we're experiencing an earthquake right now. This is just plain stupidity. And for number 20, we got the craziest fan Russell Westbrook has ever dealt with. Westbrook lost the handle on the basket. Westbrook driving to the rim, score it, and one. That, my friends, is a heady veteran play. Man, Grandpa went crazy, but not as crazy as Shaq at number 19. Damn, this man literally destroyed the hoop. But this ain't even the craziest thing he's done. Cousin number 18, Shaq, nearly killed someone. Nash. Tough shot won't go. O'Neal gonna save it. Watch out! Oh! He goes flying into the stands. Boy, what a frightening scene if you're sitting in that area. That could have killed somebody. Damn, Shaq almost crushed those kids. But they weren't the only fans in danger. Cousin number 17, Bats invaded an NBA arena. And the bats have returned. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, that was only predictable. The Here comes the Coyote. And the Coyote. He's ready this time. He's ready to not get him. Oh! <laughs> yes! And the Coyote. And the crowd is chat. That mascot deserves a raise. Damn. And uh, Isaiah Ryder deserves one, too. Cousin number 16. He hit the craziest circus shot in NBA history. Did not allow him to put it on the floor and get by. This man couldn't even see the hoop, and he still made it. Ridiculous. But for number 15, we got an even better shot. And the craziest part is, it was made by a fan. Wow, even LeBron couldn't believe it. And he wouldn't believe number 14 either. The time an NBA cheerleader got her ass eaten on live TV. The fourth quarter. Well, the Raptor having some fun with the cheerleaders. Whoa! Devoured! That's, that's wrong. That's a tough night right there. Now what happens? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. God what I would do to be that cheerleader. Uh, but all right, all right. For number 13, we got something special. The craziest assist in NBA history. See, in 2010, the Mavericks were facing the Rockets, and with less than a second left in the game, Dallas had the ball for an inbound pass and was down by just one point. So the Rockets sent seven foot six Yao Ming to guard the inbound pass when this happened. They're gonna have Yao Ming guard. Jason Kidd, so Kidd can't see over the top, and he can't. I'm here to tell you, Kidd can't see anything right now. It feels like he yeah. just ran into a mountain. Kidd to throw in, and it's like, oh, no, he's I don't believe it. What a play. How about the pass by Kidd? My goodness. This man just threw a game-winning alley-oop with half a second on the clock over Yao Ming. That is unreal. Now, for number 12, we gotta talk about the time that fans ruined Christmas. Back in 2009, it was Lakers versus Cavs, Kobe versus LeBron on Christmas Day, and fans were expecting the game of a lifetime. But what they got instead was a blowout. So late in the fourth quarter, they did this. And they're throwing the foam fingers on the floor. Well, this one getting a little out of hand. They give out. Bone fingers in the crowd throwing out, and this is unfortunate. You know, it just shows you peer pressure. One idiot throws his on the floor, and then some other people just follow suit. I'll tell you what, these fans are going on the naughty list. Ridiculous. But not as ridiculous as number 11. The time an NBA arena was flooded. 
out of absolutely nowhere. This is the most asinine, ridiculous thing I've ever seen as a broadcaster. Smoke from fireworks triggered a water cannon on the uh, northeast side of the building. It went off for a few minutes. Blammo! It's a one-gun salute with about 10,000 gallons of water. My outfit is ruined. Our seats are right over there by the flash flood. Well, I think we've seen it all. Wait, we don't need to see that. Ooh, now I'm wet. Uh, but anyways, we're entering the top 10, so things are about to get even crazier. It was the 2016 playoffs, Raptors vs. Heat, and in Game 4, with only a minute left in overtime, Dwayne Wade got the ball and did the unthinkable. 1-0-8 to play in overtime, 89-85 Heat, Wade makes his move, the scoop, it just sits there! Dwayne Wade could not get it to drop. Well, damn, I didn't see that coming. But what I really didn't expect was number nine. One of the craziest endings a game has ever had. And the play. Is he going to get there? He's got a foul. And they do. He got it. He fouled him. Garrett Temple tried to foul him. Didn't get him. And give Shea Gilgis Alexander credit as Devontae sends it. Oh, gets it! Gets it! The game winner! Oh, wow! Devontae Graham stuns him in Oklahoma City! Not only did this shot win the game for the Pelicans, but it also set the record for the longest game winning buzzer beater in NBA history 65 feet. Damn, that's a crazy way to end a game. And if we're talking crazy endings, we gotta mention number eight. See, in 2020, while playing in the bubble, LeBron led the Lakers to the NBA Finals, where they won their 17th championship in franchise history. But after the game, Lakers fans got a little too excited. What started as a huge party outside of LA Live has kind of transgressed into a little more of a scattered uh, crowd with well, not the safest of activities going on here. This has now been declared an unlawful assembly. CHP has shut down the major exits off of the 110 freeway. You are not allowed in downtown right now. Reporting live from Air 7 HD, I'm Chris Christie, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Yeah, and by the end of the night, not only was a bus destroyed and 30 buildings vandalized, but over 76 people were arrested, all because the Lakers won a ring. Jesus. LeBron had all of LA losing his damn mind. But hey, still not as bad as what he did to Cleveland in our seventh craziest moment. See, in the 2010 offseason, after seven years with the Cavs, it was rumored that LeBron wanted out of Cleveland. So the entire city started panicking, doing anything they could to try and get LeBron to stay. From making songs about him, to putting up billboards. Hell, uh, they even started hosting rallies, begging him to stay. Please don't go. We love you. You gotta stick around, LeBron. We got nothing else. Oh, please, just stay. Stay, stay, stay. But a few weeks later, LeBron did something crazy. He aired a live TV special called The Decision, where he made a huge announcement. LeBron, what's your decision? Um, and this fall, man, it's, it's, it's very tough. Um, and this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. And with that, Cavs fans absolutely lost it. Decision of LeBron James to leave his hometown team high and dry for the beaches of South Florida, being treated with outrage and anger, disappointment, disgust. I'm a big LeBron fan, and... This is the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. How arrogant to get on national TV and slap the city and the team that supported you since you've been in high school straight in the face like that. I hope he never wins anything in Miami. He is dead to me. Man, these fans went full-blown bananas. But they still got nothing on number six. Because it involves the craziest player in NBA history. Meta World Peace. See, over the years, Meta has done all kinds of crazy stuff, like throwing TV monitors, doing weird post-game interviews. Hell, he even started Malice at the Palace. But there's one moment that really crossed the line. Watch this, okay? Absolutely pull the guy's pants down and referee let him do it. But hey, a few days later, he made up for it in his own special way. Oh. I'm so sorry 
to humiliate you on TV by pulling your shorts down. I won't do it again. Damn, that was beautiful, Meta. Thank you. But look, you don't need to have some screws loose just to make a crazy moment. Cause number five, all it took for Kawhi Leonard was one shot. Gotta be aware of the inbounder here if you're Philly. It's off to Leonard, defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? Kawhi's shot knocked Philly's asses out of the playoffs. And a couple of series later, the Raptors went on to win their first ever NBA championship. Damn, this dude Kawhi is dangerous. And that brings us to number four, a groundbreaking moment that left millions of people shook. Folks, we're experiencing an earthquake right now. Whoa, yes can we are. Can you feel the I earth can. below you? Yes, I can. Yeah, there was an actual earthquake in the middle of an NBA game. And this wasn't a small earthquake either, because it was felt by millions of people across three different states and Mexico. So they ended up canceling the game and evacuating the arena. But look, dog, we're in the top three now. So you're about to see crazy get even crazier. We're losing all of our marbles. I just flung the headset off. Ow. And we gotta talk about the craziest fan in NBA history. See, in the 2012 playoffs, the Lakers were facing the Nuggets when, late in the second quarter, something suspicious happened. The Nuggets now lead 49 44 as we approach a minute left in the first half. Look out. Apparently, a fan ended up on the floor. This lady just wandered onto the court, and it seemed like this was just a drunk fan interrupting a game. But a couple of minutes later, a sideline reporter discovered something horrifying. This lady has a history with the Nuggets. I talked to a couple of the detectives. Detective Todd Erickson, who had immediately grabbed her and walked her off the court, said several years ago she was found stalking or following several players. Yeah, this crazy chick have been stalking NBA players for years, and somehow had gotten past security and onto the court. So she was arrested and banned from the arena. You know, I don't think we're gonna see a fan that crazy again. And we'll probably never see a moment like number two again either. The craziest game of Kobe's career. It was January 22nd, 2006, Lakers, versus Raptors, and Kobe Bryant was popping off. Right, well, Kobe Bryant has got six, he's got 10 already. Kobe Bryant, 17, Kobe with 21. Kobe dropped 27 points in the first half alone. But going into the third quarter, the Lakers were still down 14 in need of something crazy to happen. That's when the Black Mamba was unleashed. Kobe's baseline got it again. Kobe, 30 points. Here's Kobe trying to move around Mo Pete, trying to put him up. Finally shoots, caught into the foul. Kobe's got 44. Knocked away by Kobe. Great hustle by Kobe. He's gonna score. And don't break his lead. <laughs> Well, that's 51 for number eight. Kobe goes straight to the dribble in the lane, laid up and in. Kobe Bryant, he's got 61 points. Yes! Well, there's 70. Kobe Bryant, 28 for 46 from the field. This would be 18 for 20 from the line and an 81 point game. 81 points for the win. And one of the craziest games ever. Man, it can't get any crazier than that, right? Well, you still got number one, the craziest comeback the NBA has ever seen. It was 2016. The Cavs were facing the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals, and LeBron was trying to win Cleveland their first championship ever. But after four games, they were down three to one. And statistically, their chances of making a comeback were less than 4%. Yeah. And with that, 
the entire world told LeBron a comeback was impossible. I do not believe that LeBron can beat this team. The Golden State Warriors showed us last night. They are in a completely different class wow. than the Cleveland Cavaliers. You're not going to get a 45-point night from him. Those days are over. He's a human being. We're seeing the LeBron that is 31, is not going to chase you down and block from behind, is not going to slam dunk as much, or with the, the volume he did. But with his back against the wall, LeBron James stepped up and made NBA history. James makes, James drives, James finishes, and the foul. Steps back, he tries another three. That's good, LeBron James from downtown. James against Rush, leans in, tried to draw the foul, got him up, count it, and one. 40 points for LeBron James. What a road victory for the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're saying this is the biggest game in franchise history. Chased by LeBron James, hooked away from behind, then releases. And Curry has to back off as James throws it down. Pass inside, stolen by Irving. Throws it ahead to Smith. Smith, alley up to James! Wow! It's Bedlam here in Cleveland. Perry blocked by James. And there's the buzzer. Game seven, Sunday night in Oakland. Oracle Arena is alive and roaring as we get set for game seven. Perry helps out. Smith pass right through the hands of Perry. James, a two-handed slam. Curry drives again, left-handed, blocked by James. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James! LeBron James with the rejection. Irving and Curry, one-on-one. Irving puts it up. It's good! Kyrie Irving from downtown! It's over! It's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again. The Cavaliers are in. Champions. Cleveland's long sports nightmare has ended. The drought is over. And the emotions for LeBron James, who delivers on his promise to come home and bring a championship to his beloved hometown. Cleveland! This is for you! Ow! Cleveland pulled off a miracle, winning their first title in franchise history and becoming the first team to ever come back from a three to one lead. Now that is just crazy. But you know what else is crazy? This past NBA season, I mean, uh, we had fans harassing LeBron, players trying to fight coaches, John Moran even bullied a five-year-old. There was a whole lot of disrespect going on. 